open your eyes. We're now moving into our third and final segment for the morning. This one is a conversation. It's going to be a conversation with reps of the Belmopan Cancer Society, and they'll be giving us an update on recent events. Now, in with us, we have Luke Ramos, who is the president of the Belmopan Cancer Society, and also Mr. Rodney Neal, who is uh, immediate past president, Belmopan Cancer Society. Good morning, gentlemen, and welcome. Right. Good, good morning. morning. Good morning, Marlene. Good morning, Marlene. Good morning. Oh, it's nice. nice. It's nice to have you guys in. We know, uh, with respect to the topic, uh, and of course, respect to with respect to the word cancer, how difficult it is. Uh, most of us, if not <laughs> all of us, have, have lost loved ones to cancer in that big fight or that battle. Let's talk about the Belmopan Cancer Society and what's uh, going on there to continue to spread the word and to continue the fight. Sure. Thank you, um, Mr. Neil. Would you share? Okay, certainly. Um, well, we, the president will be speaking a little bit more about that um, eventually, but um, generally we are involved with public awareness and education, and there are certain activities that we undertake to support yeah. the public awareness um, program that we have. We do, we do education of the public in various ways by... Um, the sh like a show today, like the TV show today, um, on the on the on the radio, and also in um, literature, and we do outreach also to the rural communities, and um, collaborate with health-related agencies. We provide financial assistance also to people who are affected with cancer and need to get treatment, whether it's in Belize yeah. or abroad. So all of these are activities that we undertake in order to support. Um, persons who may be affected by cancer. Apart from their awareness, things like the candlelight vigil yeah. and the annual cancer walk. Um, and then, of course, we do fundraising events. And again, I suppose the, the president can't speak to this a little bit later on. Yeah. But we do um, undertake fundraising events. And the funds from these are principally, principally used. Mm -hmm. Uh-oh. Looks like somebody else is trying to get in touch with you there. <laughs> but let me, yeah. let me just jump in here and ask. Uh, the, the biggest question I guess uh, um, people want to know, uh, want answered, is looking at uh, how were you able to raise funds during the time of the pandemic? A lot of uh, the usual fundraising activities really couldn't be done because of all the safety protocols we had in place. Yeah, that is so true, uh, Marlene. Yeah. Um, in fact, when the announcement was made in March, uh, we were kind of hold back and said, well, what will we do now? Yeah. And it wasn't until mid to the latter part of the year that we started to use technology to our advantage, huh? thanks to Google Meet and, um, and Zoom and chat group. Now we were able to organize ourselves and so most of our activities that we were able to accomplish took place in the latter part of the year. Yeah. Me, normally, we would have our annual um, cancer walk, which had to be postponed. Mm -hmm. And again, in October, normally we have what we call our Pink Gala. That is one of our most largest fundraisers. Again, that had to be postponed, yeah. I mean canceled. But what we did, Marlene and Jan, was in October, being it um, where we observe Breast Cancer Awareness Month, we were able to do quite a lot of things in that month. Uh, we did a wear pink donation appeal. Um, that was, we did a tree planting ceremony, a virtual cancer walk. This was a small walk, which how, we did. How do you do a virtual cancer walk? Actually, actually, we had uh, we we copied some of the programs that others were doing, uh -huh. and then we decided, you know what? Let's get out there one Saturday, which was like the last Saturday in the month. Mm -hmm. A few members of us went out. We were few in numbers, but high in spirit. Yeah. And um, actually, that, <clears throat> that event yielded a significant donation we got from uh, BEL okay. for that event. So we were glad that we kept that as one of the activity now. Yeah. Besides that, in October, we completed our annual, cancer, uh, annual candlelight vigil. This, again, is a major event where we focus on those who may have lost the battle and those who have won the battle as well, no? Yeah. Uh, well, we did a month-long cancer awareness campaign on our Facebook, 
we use our Facebook to the advantage and we got quite a lot of traffic to the to the um, page, yeah, mm -hmm. to inform on 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 cancer, no? Yeah. I'm um, going down in November. We had our annual turkey fundraiser. Again, this yield a significant amount of money for us. And then in December, we had what we call a Christmas hamper. We distributed Christmas hamper on and behalf of BEL. We partnered with them and we were able to reach out to the most needy uh, people in the community as well as in the rural and in the Mopan. And uh, we joined that same event. And we also assisted some members in the Bermapan area. No? So yeah. all in all, it was very successful in that, in that regard. No? Of and course, when we came to, um, uh, we didn't stop there. The year didn't stop there. We went into February. February caught us uh, where we focused on work and today. Yeah. And this is where my, my colleague would like to share a little bit more about what we did on that particular day. No? Yeah. World Cancer Day is what day? 4th of February, Margarita. It's the 4th of February, okay. So that was February. earlier this month. Right, right. Um, every year it's the 4th of February, whether it's um, Sunday or a Monday, whatever the yeah. date is. Um, so what we normally do is that for World Cancer Day, we have been doing for the past several years is to provide free blood sugar and blood pressure tests to the community. But we couldn't do that this year, obviously, because of the, 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 the pandemic and the social distancing, which is required. So what we did is that we organized um, an SA competition. Uh, we had two schools participating, Our Lady of Guadalupe High School yeah. and um, Belmapan Comprehensive School. Yeah. Um, and this basically, this was all done um, virtually because mm -hmm. we... What we did, did is that we um, we did a webinar. Okay. Okay. Um, so the, the 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 essays were written by two students from each um, school, mm -hmm. and um, it was judged by a panel of judges which we selected, and then we went into a webinar where the students they read the essays that they had um, they had composed, mm -hmm. and um, we had prizes for them actually. Uh, yeah. the, the, what was the topic for the essay? What was the topic for the essay? The topic was the significance of World Cancer Day. Mm. Oh, okay. That's interesting. Yeah. And what were some of the points that they brought out in their essays? Well, um, the thing is that World Cancer Day, which they, they, they underlined it, is that um, everyone has a responsibility to provide some sort of assistance, whether to family or to friends. Um, each person individually should not just live, but they should live and do. Yeah. And in fact, mm. one of the, one of the um, themes, which is um, the one that we have this year and we have, we've had for the last two years is, I am and I will. Yeah. Okay? In other words, you do not just exist. Yeah. Yeah. But you also do something with your life, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and for example, a couple of years before that, 2016 to 2018, the theme was we can, I can. Mm -hmm. In other words, it's a, together, you know, we need to do things, <clears throat> we need to do things together. Yeah. And um, that, that has gone on, gone on very well. The winners for that um, SA competition was a comprehensive um, high school, Belmapan Comprehensive High School. Um, and the two students that participated were Malachi Hyde and Kiren Koyok. Wow. They, they together <clears throat> got a prize of $300, which they shared equally, mm -hmm. I think. I believe. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the other high school that participated also got $200, or later, yeah. Guadalupe school got $200 to be shared with the two um, students who um, did the competition, yeah. Kaylee Flowers and Caitlin Rodon. Wow. So okay. they also shared that among themselves. Well, Mr. Fantastic. Neil, I could, I could just imagine how compassionate, uh, uh, there are the compassionateness that, that actually came out of, those, um, out of those essays. What was the judging criteria? What were you guys looking forward to? Well, we, we used what is called a rubric, mm. all right? 
and that involves um, not only the, the, the content, but also, also the, the, the gra grammar, the presentation, and various other aspects, you know? Yeah. Um, the students themselves and their, their teachers as well, let me say this, their teachers as well, were very, very impressed with the whole thing, and they said they learned a lot. Yeah. And it was a great joy to us because one of the things we want to do is to involve more youth in the cancer society. Yeah, if yeah. You know, and, and that's, that's part of the question that I wanted to ask because John started off by saying we all um, across the country, if we don't have someone directly affected by cancer, we know someone who's been affected by cancer. Mm -hmm. Some have uh, mm -hmm. been able to overcome the battle and some unfortunately have not. Tell us a bit about some of the cases that you see in Belmopan and just how the society offers support to them. All right. Um, Mr. President, yes. Yeah. Sir Marley, Marlene, um, the financial assistance, the main reason for a lot of what we do, as Ms. Anil had identified, um, is either cancer awareness or to raise much needed funds to support those who are in need of treatment for cancer. And um, the 2020, we were able to um, assist about eight families no, from Belmapan and the surrounding area. In fact, our, um, our financial assistance program speaks to um, one, you have to be within the catchment area of Belmapan as far as St. Matthews, um, then as far as St. Margaret, uh, Franks Eddy, Unitedville and Valley of Peace. So once you're in that area, you can apply to us now. Yeah. What we ask them to do is to submit a letter of application, yeah. um, include the, 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 the doctor's prognosis, um, copies of your medical records, yeah. you know? and then what we do, the screening committee will then look at it and see how much we can help. Now, depending on where you're getting treatment and the severity of your situation, yeah. we then determine what amount we could give. We can say that we give a maximum of $1,800 yeah. to assist any individual. That's got to be a challenging job. To seek medical um, yeah. treatment now. So you know um, the fundraising is so crucial every year. We need to ensure we raise funds so we yeah. can assist those look, that are in need of that fund. Yeah. Yeah. Look, look, give us some insight there. When you, when you sit with, you know, on paper especially, stories and diagnosis and, um, you know, these are real people who, who really just need help in trying to save their life. Um, what's it like having to, to go through that screening process and, and making decisions like that? Oh, it's, um, it's extremely um, touching, um, Marlene, extremely touching. Um, as a group, each time we, we wish we could do more yeah. for them because the, the amount we give is just like a drop in the bucket now. Yeah. Uh, many of them needed much more than that, depending on where they're going, uh, whether it's Mexico or Guatemala. Or even some in the U.S. now, and uh, we just wish we could do more to help them to be able to overcome this disease. Huh? Yeah. How many people get treated locally that that you see? Like, is um, it, like what percentage I, I think, would you say? I, I'm not sure in that regard, um, um, Marlene. Okay. Uh, we 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 basically deal with the um, we give the the award the the the, the, the assistance and then we follow up with them basically you know? yeah, yeah. so it would only be those within our group that we would be following up every time to check did they come back from treatment how is the treatment going mm -hmm. um why we do that again marlene because there is the opportunity for additional assistance um once you're able to provide evidence that you have um used the source appropriately you can apply for a second assistance you mm -hmm. see yeah so okay we, Okay. It becomes real sad when we would lose one of, 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 of our, of mm. our um, person who applied to us. No? Yeah. Mm. It's yeah. a very touching experience to work with it. I've had to be the, the chairman for the past two or three years, and um, it, it is an experience that um, we just wish we could do more. I and what's the, what's the demographic like? Are you looking at just older people or the young people, types of cancers? 
give us some insight to, to what you're seeing there. Yeah. Um, very interesting, uh, Marlene. We have um, young and old. Yeah. yeah. Young and old. Um, our assistance call for you would have to be under 70 years, but we have had applicants as well over 70 you now. Yeah. Okay. Now we have had as young as in the 20s as well you now. Wow. Yeah. You know, it, 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 and different stages of cancer. I mean, how how stages, different types of cancer. Yes. Yeah. And the fight, the fight is always a together one, and you've got a vibrant group going on there. I'm sure there there are a lot of people who would like to become, especially um, for the fact that they've been directly uh, impacted by this. How can one become a part of this group uh, to, to to channel the fight? Yes. Yeah. Wonderful question, um, John. Actually, we completed the year with our annual general meeting. No? That is when we, uh, we re-elect the, the, um, the executive committee. No? Um, our 23rd annual general meeting was held on the 11th of February. And um, we had like the Mr. Emil Lagas who served as our MC, Mr. Pastor Lance who gave us invocation. We had the various reports, presidents, treasurer, welcome. Yeah. But we also had very highlight was two testimonials, um, two of our, um, of our, what we call those that we assisted, were able to give their testimony. And, and to us, that was the most touching part of the AGM, no? Yeah. Where they shared their experience and what they have gone through. Yeah. That was followed by some recognition of our donors, those who support us, like DEL, the Barry, uh, one particularly uh, member from the society, um, Zion Creation, we express our appreciation by giving them plaques or certificate now. Yeah. And then we closed off by the, the new executive, if you may allow me to just list the new executive. We had uh, myself as president, Victoria Forbes as vice president, Desiree Coleman as secretary, Evita Palmer as assistant secretary, Daret Caetano as treasurer, Peter Argas as assistant treasurer, Rodney Neal as our immediate past president, which is an ex-official position. Okay. Beverly Swayze, our president emeritus, again, an ex-official position. And four trustees, Ms. Wilma Neal, Mr. Steve Burns, Ms. So Mrs. Sonia Burns, and Michael Coase. Yeah. Now, why I named the executive? Because this is a group that will work on ensuring that we survive and we do better in 2021, no? Yeah. yeah. Uh, already we are discussing our calendar of events and to see whether these larger fundraiser that we normally do will be possible. You know that um, right now with COVID-19, it's looking a little bit better in Belize. We're keeping our fingers crossed that um, come May or October, we could look and see if we could do a large event. So we could raise more funds and raise others, no? and, and raise and help more people. Yeah. What is important is that the um, for us, a main thing is visibility, um, John. Right? We need to do more to so that the community know that we are there, and that we are offering this service, no? Yeah. yeah. Um, and so, the again, the number of members we need to recruit more. One of our major events for 2021 is to strengthen our membership by doing a re-registration exercise, as well as reach out to more. And not just to more, but there is a, the, 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 uh, the goal is to look at a younger generation, okay. you know, okay. to try to attract the youth, which the World Cancer Day was one of those initiatives where we got all excited about because it, uh, it involved the youth, you no? Know? And yeah. we, were all, we, 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 we can't stop talking about it, no? Yeah. yeah. Well, we do hope that more people we do hope that more people will be and that's that's a great part of having you here when you tell us about the stories of the people who benefit from the work that you do um it really can inspire more people to to want to join in and to support when they can um so we know that cancer is something as we said very early on affects so many families across the country um, and that you guys at the Belmopan Cancer Society are doing your part in your own uh, community. Thank yeah. you so much for joining us and for we, telling us the latest as to what's been happening. And we do wish you the best and please stay safe. Please share our contact number with, you, with us, no, please? Our yes. Facebook page and our telephone number so that they could reach yeah. us now.
right. So we'll have right. that. Yeah, very thank you, Channel 5, for assisting us, our members, our supporters, our donors. Thanks to all those who continue to support us. We look forward to your support in mm -hmm. 2021. All right. All right. Well, Mr. Neil, Mr. Ramos, thank you guys yeah. so, so very much. We're about to take You're a break. Welcome. We're about You're to take welcome. a break. And uh, when we come back, we'll be wrapping things up. Stay with us.